Hello everyone, Mike here, bringing you the story of my updated recording studio built circa July 2020. Having more free time on my hands due to COVID-19, I asked my father-in-law, Bruce Troutman, if he would assist me in a project that I had been dreaming of ever since I moved into my new home in 2015. Join me on the transformation of my studio from a simple iMac on a desk to the multi-screened, multi-green screened behemoth that it is today. So stay tuned and enjoy the behind the scenes video of how my current recording studio came to be. Thanks for watching. In 2011, my earliest studio setup began at my apartment in Astoria, New York. This stage of my studio's development was the smallest setup I have ever had. All of my equipment, my iMac, my microphones, and my Casio Privia keyboard, as well as all my monitors were nestled into a small corner of the apartment. And it was very hard to record there because of the close proximity to my fellow tenants. As a result, I would often record on my days off in the early afternoon hours when most people were not in the building. My only live recording in this apartment was my rendition of Angels We Have Heard on High. The story of my studio continued when I moved to my new house in Waukee, Iowa in 2015. After much deliberation, I decided to record my music in the storage room which is situated in the basement of my house. This photo shows how my studio looked on July 3rd, 2020. It stood this way from 2015 to 2020 and was relatively unchanged during that period. It basically housed my 2007 iMac with a pair of JBL monitors and an ONN 37-inch LED TV, which was used as a separate monitor. Next to this tiny desk was my weighted piano keyboard, which I had purchased in 2009 off of Craigslist while living in Long Island, New York. While this setup suited me well through the years, I always had a desire to improve and build upon what I already had. Pursuant to that end, I requested the aid of my father-in-law, Bruce Troutman. During the COVID epidemic of 2019 to 2020, I was spending significantly more time at home, and as such, I developed a desire to enhance my studio. While my studio was suitable, I always wanted to make it more efficient at producing my music. My original concept was to build a rather large table which would provide increased distance from my studio monitors to better gauge the mixing and audio quality of my music. My former setup positioned me too close to my monitors and I felt as though this distorted my perception of my songs, thus resulting in poor quality mixes. Aside from that, I also required more desk space to store all of my equipment. My concept was to place the table on legs as is with most desks or tables. However, Bruce came up with a more inspired idea which would require the desk to be supported by beams around its perimeter, leaving the desk to rest on a base of 2x4s. This idea would turn out to be much better because it allowed me to slide the desk back and forth 
making it easier to reach and rearrange the chords behind it. Without this idea, it would have been much more difficult to adjust chords or plug in new ones. So kudos to Bruce for this idea. This photo shows Studio 1.0. This setup stood for a few months before I improved upon it further. The following clips were filmed shortly after the construction and setup of all the electronics. Most of the electronics are still arranged in a similar fashion. The previous video depicts Studio 1.0 prior to enhancing it with shelves and other objects that it houses today. Without further ado, here is the final behind the scenes Studio 2.0 tour. This video was filmed very recently and depicts all the updates as they stand today. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy. I record most all of my recordings in this studio except for of course when I'm recording on site somewhere which is a little bit more rare than I'm recording here. Uh, the first thing you'll see when you enter into my studio is my National Anthem memorabilia poster, plaque, whatever you would call it. This was given to me on Christmas a couple years ago by my lovely mother-in-law, Kim Troutman. It basically has all the tickets, photos, and memorabilia from all of my National Anthem performances over the last decade. You'll see I have tickets from Yankee Stadium, Baltimore Orioles, New York Mets, although I didn't perform for the New York Mets, that's just a ticket from a game I attended. The first thing you'll see also when you enter into my studio is my hangers, which have usually clothing and outfits that I'll wear for my recordings. I usually like to wear something a little bit more fancy for my recordings than what I would usually wear going out to the store or whatnot. I also hang here all of my backpacks and uh, satchels that I usually bring for different things. I have one for cantering, I have one for substitute teaching, I also have one for just recording projects done on site somewhere. The next thing you'll see are my green screen lights, which I have illuminated right now for you to see. These are great lights. My wife bought them. I should give her credit for that, because if I don't, I'll get in trouble. She bought them for me on Amazon a couple years ago. I think it was about $70, the green screen and the lights themselves. Great, great kit. I highly recommend it. And it really kind of illuminates the room and gives you a nice warm light that is perfect to record with a green screen. The next thing you'll notice is my main microphone. I believe it's an AKG 200, I think. It's a great microphone. Gets the job done. Um, got my pop filter here. I got a nice mic stand. And this is the main green screen that I use most of the time. I actually, uh, when I bought it, it came with tripods to hold it up. But I uh, mounted it to the ceiling a couple of years ago so that it can hang from the ceiling and it can always be uh, removed at a moment's notice to access anything behind the green screen on the storage shelf because after all this is a storage room and it needs to function as such. I also have a second green screen for when I record uh, more intimate projects just directly in front of my laptop. Sometimes I don't feel like walking all the way over here to record something that's a little bit more simple and just needs a quick green screen project so I have that second one here for that purpose. I have all my blank CDs and cleaning supplies over here. I have my modest video game collection of Dreamcast, Sega Saturn, Xbox, Nintendo 64, NES. Prior to my collection, my Nintendo Virtual Boy, which is for me something from my childhood that always brings back memories and is very nostalgic for me. The next thing you'll see in my studio is my wonderful two-month planner board. I actually got this board when I worked at Bowler Engineering around 2002 to 2004. It was a great summer job and my boss was throwing out this uh, magnet board that is also a two-month two calendar. So I quickly snatched it up. I've had it for over 19 years since that day and it has served me well for over the years so I'm very happy to have that. The next thing you'll notice is that I have a camera mounted on a tripod, not a tripod, but a camera arm. I usually use that for recording piano tracks. Um, this is my, I don't know what, this is a Williams piano actually. So this is my Williams piano, it's a weighted keyboard. It really has great sensitivity for when you want to have a lot of dynamic range in your recordings, so it's a perfect piano for me. It was very, very cheap, but it works and does the job well. This is my Prezonus fader port. I love this thing. It has a little fader that you can adjust tracks on. Uh, I wanted to always get a big mixing board that would connect to my 
audio program, but uh, those are like three times more expensive. And this just controls one track. You can do panning, stop, record, loop, all that stuff. These are all my little incidentals and knickknacks that I use throughout the day. I have me uh, memory cards and stuff like that. This is my MIDI controller. It was uh, relatively inexpensive, and I really use it a lot. It's a great, great little tool for you know manipulating music on the fly. Next, I have all of my task sheets and forms for when I record. I like to keep track of every take that I do so that I can find the best take for whatever recording I'm working on. I also use one of these to put in front of the camera to record which take I'm on and then when I upload it to the computer it's a lot easier to find the appropriate take that I'm working with and that I want to use for the final recording. I also try to keep very organized with my monthly tasks here beneath a plastic uh, cover. I have my monthly tasks, I have my overall task list here, my several business cards that I printed through the years I keep there. I have an assortment of pens, highlighters, and markers, two little filing stations for um, just general singing things as well as love champion things. I keep photos of my family very close to me on my desk. I keep these around me to remind myself of who I am writing music for and who in my li life that I love deeply and care for. Um, I also keep a filing system, things I need to scan, things I need to process, and things I need to file. Processing is just generally things that I haven't had time to deal with yet. I just shoved them there. Uh, I have several monitors behind me, and on the board you'll notice I have several plaques. Um, these plaques are of CDs and accomplishments that I've done throughout the years. The, this one back here is my first Love Champion CD, which I am not very proud of because I wasn't really good at mixing then. Uh, then I have here my Ferris Blue CD, which I did with my first band in 2007, Ferris Blue, which was under the direction of Brian Johnston, a very brilliant guitar player and writer. Um, I actually designed the cover for this CD, um, and I was very happy with how it came out. It was a great project to work on, very happy with how that came out, and I was very happy to actually have something that I designed that was actually printed at the time. For me in 2007, that was a novelty, and I was very happy to have accomplished that. I have two busts here because I love busts. Both of them are of my favorite composer, Ludwig Beethoven, who I love dearly and I use as an inspiration for music that I write all the time. Of course, I don't write anything nearly as complex and beautiful as what he did, but it's an inspiration nonetheless. Secondly, I keep all pertinent information to file here. I usually keep about five or six items to file for, which are things that are coming up in the near future that are important, that require uh, printed documents in order to process. So that is where I keep those. I also keep some of my favorite books and just random things to, that I want to have access to quickly. Uh, most of what I have here are uh, my favorite uh, writer, Rudolf Steiner, his books. I have several philosophical books, um, video game books, as well as recording books. This was a great find, the 1982 hymnal, which is the hymnal for the Episcopal Church, which I sang in for over 10 years in both Roslyn, Trinity Roslyn Church, and Christ Church Oyster Bay in New York. Um, so that, that was a great find, finding that 1982 hymnal in a used bookstore very close to my house. It only cost me like $7, which was a fantastic deal, and I love, I record from that hymnal very often. The next thing you'll notice beyond that is a couple uh, posters that I have. The farther one that is green is something from my senior recital back in 2007. I printed this poster to commemorate that day and I put it up that day um, as people entered into the uh, performance space so they could see that poster that I designed. The next one is my Love Champion poster. It is a photo of me taken uh, from Mount St. Helens and I made a poster out of it. I just always loved that photo and it was um, kind of, it was always designed to be something for Love Champion, but uh, I just loved how the poster itself really reflected the triumphant feeling that I wanted to encapsulate with my Love Champion projects. You'll see 
The same photo is used as my background for my iMac. That is a perfect segue into the next thing I want to show you in my studio tour, which is my computer monitors. I have uh, three of them. I have this one here, which usually houses all of my mixing and like frequency spectrum items for recording. This main laptop monitor is where I usually keep my main track uh, window. Above in the main TV, I keep my mixer board to help me to see what tracks are doing, what volume levels they're at, etc, etc. And of course, above all and highest thing in my studio is my crucifix commemorating the fact that I want to dedicate everything that I do to the service of the Lord and to the service of promoting peace, love, happiness, harmony in everybody that I come across. Um, so I try to keep this crucifix above everything to keep me centered into why I do everything that I do in the first place. Um, you'll see next I have a scanner and my, my audio interface here. This is the scanner. This is an external hard drive that I use for recording. And this is my interface. It is a Scarlett. Um, it has two inputs. Uh, which is all I really need, need. I never really record anything more than two inputs, even if even I do that. Um, I think that's about it for what I want to show you today at my studio. I thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video, and I hope you enjoyed this behind-the-scenes peek of everything that makes up Love Champion and makes it possible. So thank you very much for taking the time to view this. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Thus concludes the 2021 Love Champion Studio Tour. Please visit www.imlovechampion.com or for Michael Freeze recordings, please visit www.michaelfreeze.com. Thanks again for watching this studio tour video. I hope you enjoyed. And keep posted for new Mike Freeze slash Love Champion videos in the near future. God bless. It's not.